Hello, this is Jonas from the Solution Center in Tokyo. Uh, we are now going to do uh, some work with Redfish and uh, SCP, Server Configuration Profiles. Uh, they can be very handy for automating um, and copying configurations, uh, BIOS, uh, RAID settings, uh, RAID volumes, etc., etc., across um, between servers. So um, we're going to start by exporting the system configuration and um, we are exporting it in the format of XML, which is a default, and we are sending this off to a standard SIFS uh, or you know uh, SMB uh, Windows share. It's on a Linux server, but whatever. So um, we're going to start by doing that. Simply kick off with Python and um, use that script. These scripts, by the way, are included in a white paper, um, which I will post the information for uh, when we put this up on YouTube. Uh, there are a couple of white papers, but um, this one focuses on the server configuration profiles. So let me specify uh, the name of the file that we want to export to. So that'll end up on that file share. The rest, of course, is the IDRAC IP address, username, and the password. So we see here now from uh, looking at the, the server, and this is a 14G server, uh, that the export configuration profile job has been kicked off and is running. The script will also query this server until the job is marked as complete. It will give you also the uh, the latest status of it. So, and there you go. Um, that is a full export that took 24 seconds. It's uh, a lot faster on 14G than 13G, by the way. So, if we look then at the uh, file share server, uh, the Samba share. That we, uh, we copied this file to and there you go that is the the file that we were looking for of course if you export the file you may want to import it as well and um, we're just going to use the file that we had here since before that we just exported and we are going to edit um, actually we just take the for example the power cap because that's easy and uh, very visible Right now it's disabled, we don't have a cap on the power. And we'll just enable this and change it to a value that is easy to recognize. For example, yeah, 444. And I will delete all the other entries in here. Um, you could upload the entire file as is. The server will be smart enough to realize that you have, uh, you know, it doesn't need to change all the settings, but I just wanted to show uh, that you can do a selective update just on these two settings, the power cap settings being enabled and also the value for the power cap. We save this now as a separate file um, so we can compare that with the, the full export size-wise at the very least. So now if we list this up, we can see we got the, um, the full export and then just the power cap. Very short. You can use this on a separate server as well. It doesn't have to be the same uh, server type. As long as they've got roughly the same firmware version, then you should be fine, depending on the settings. But in this case, it should be work across. Let's look at the, um, the import, the SIFS import script. And um, well, basically now we're just doing uh, import system configuration and specifying the file name as the input uh, for this. And um, it is already preset to uh, go and look at uh, the specified file share. So we just enter the IDRAC uh, IP address, username, password, and then the file that we wanted to go take. So just copy and paste that from here. In this case, of course, we're not updating very much, so it's fairly quick. If we check it from here, yeah, it's actually already completed. There you go. Uh, it's fairly fast, so um, let's go and, uh, yeah, it's just 12 seconds. It's pretty quick, quick. Let's go and verify that the setting is in there, and um, it's set to Enabled and uh, 444 watts. 
And there you are, power management, power cap is set, enabled, 4 and 44. So there you go. We can now also export uh, the server configuration profiles to web servers. So we have uh, an Apache web server that has been set up to allow for importing or uploading of files. So that's what we're going to do. And the script now is export to HTTP. As you can see, the format is JSON instead of XML, like it was before. And the share type is set to HTTP. So just enter the web server folder and the IP address of the web server, and that's all you need. It takes then the standard IDRAC IP username, password, and also then the file name uh, that you want to, uh, to create as uh, input variables. And then not forget to set the file extension to JSON instead of XML there. So we let that job run. It should not take too long either. It should be done in a few seconds time. Yeah, and there you go. 12 seconds for that as well, so fairly quick. And if we go and check the actual web server, there you go, there's the, uh, the file name that we specified that we wanted. Of course, if you have exported, you may want to import. Let's do the same thing. You can import it, of course, from the same web server. Now, um, let's just modify this a little bit. We set the power cap before, uh, so that'll be set to 444. Let's just update that to 555 just to verify that we can do this with JSON and from a web share as well. And now of course we do the Redfish SCP import HTTP script. And specify the IDRAC IP address, username, password, and the file name. In this case, we have not edited the file um, to remove all the other entries like we did for the XML file, which means that um, the server will read this, it will compare it to the settings it already has, and uh, it will ignore everything that is already set as specified. Uh, it'll only uh, take the entries that we have specified now, which is the power value, the power cap value. Um, so it should be fairly fast as well. There you go, that's also 12 seconds. Uh, seem to be the magical number. If we go in there and uh, we can check the, the config for it. And there you go, the value is now set to 555. No problem at all. So standard export format um, actually comments out a lot of sections in the file to make sure that if you import the file to another server, it will not destroy any data. Um, now, if we specify this um, with a clone option instead, when we export it, uh, you will end up with a file um, that has those areas uh, uncommented. So they will be, if you apply it to another server, it will wipe out any partitions, uh, any uh, RAID volumes in there and recreate them. Uh, so this is really handy if you have the same type of server and uh, you want to uh, automatically set up not just the BIOS settings, etc., etc., but also want the RAID controller to recreate all the RAID volumes. Um, it's actually really cool. Once you, you have, if you have a lot of services set up, this can really save you a lot of time. So that's what we're doing now. We are now going to export it in a clone format. And uh, it's the same file, the same type of file. It's just that when you enter the, the clone option in there, um, it is going to leave uh, a lot of the sections um, uncommented. So they will be applied if you then uh, enter this into another server. Let's have a look at the, um, the resulting file. We have specified that that was a clone and it's an XML format in this case, so let's have a look at it. How you can verify if it is in a, RAID, or in a clone format or not is to look at the RAID settings, for example, because they will be set to create the volumes, otherwise these areas will be uh, commented out. As you can see, it's set to create in the RAID action, 
and um, then you can be certain that this, uh, if you import this to another system, it will be applied, it will recreate the RAID volumes. It has to, of course, have the same type of disks uh, in there for that to work, but uh, it can be really handy. Now, we've exported to shares so far. It's actually possible to uh, suck down the uh, settings into a local file that you can utilize um, if you want to just check something locally on the, the client PC that you got. So um, let's do that. Let's just do an export local. And in this case, it will display the output to screen. It will also create a, uh, an XML file with, with the settings in there. You can specify the sections as well uh, for this so that it doesn't export everything. You can say you just want the BIOS settings, just the network settings, just the RAID settings, etc. But there you go. It just created the, uh, the export file there as well. And the same thing about importing. So um, let's uh, have a look at this. We can uh, modify something in here again. We first make a, a copy of it. Now this was the BIOS section that we exported before, not the entire thing. So um, let's go and change, for example, the processor virtualization. Uh, it's disabled, but we enable that. Just that one setting. Now since this is the BIOS setting for the CPU settings, um, it will need to reboot the server for this to take effect. So it will take a little bit longer uh, than the other settings we have applied. However, um, we can check actually how long this is going to take. So um, I'm going to copy this file, just take these entries that we have. I'm going to put that on the SIFS file share that we used so far. And um, I'm going to use another script to actually check how long we estimate that uh, it's going to take to change the settings in there. So now we copied that, we have a, uh, a file on the SIFS share, we export local. And um, we're going to run the script now to check how long that's going to take. So it's basically import preview is what it's called. So that's the script we kick off now. And we'll see what it says about it. It will definitely take a while. It's hard to estimate this because it depends on the server type as well and how it is configured when it comes to booting, etc., etc. So, for example, if it's set to boot from the network or uh, if it has a lot of disks in it, etc., etc., it can take a while. It does estimate this is going to take 180 seconds, though. So um, let's see. Now we'll do the actual import. And in this case, we import local, which means we don't use the SIFS share. We just specify the file that we have locally here, the, uh, the demo export uh, local XML file. I'm going to speed this up a little bit. It takes a few minutes for it. There you go, four minutes, 47 seconds. A little bit over the expected uh, time of 180 seconds, but um, let's have a look in the configuration. Did we actually uh, Get that BIOS setting changed. Process of virtualization was disabled. Let's see if it's enabled now. And it is. Fantastic. So that seemed to work fine. So this is a very powerful tool for working with the uh, server configurations, for cloning, and uh, for deploying servers uh, on, in bulk. So uh, please uh, have a look at it, and hopefully it'll be useful to you. Thank you.